Let's get talking about punch and die clearance. So this is something we talk about all the time with customers. This is a daily occurrence. We talk about with customers, if you're punching round holes, square holes, oblong holes, or any type of custom application, you need to have the correct clearance between your punch and die. So what we're gonna do today, we have three machines set up. We have the Piranha, the Geeka, and the Edwards set up with three different clearance setups. We're gonna talk about those, why we have the clearance set up, the way we do on each machine, and how you determine the clearance between the punch and die. So we'll get that started. Um, you want to have the correct clearance between your punch and die for two main reasons. Number one, you want your tools to last as long as possible. So with having that correct clearance between your punch and die, you're not going to have excessive wear on your punch or your die, and they're going to last as long as possible. Number two, you want a nice, good, clean looking part. So, when you have the correct clearance between the punch and die, it's going to get a real nice um, nice hole, no burr, and it's going to look real good. If you have excessive clearance, you're going to get a burr at the bottom of the material. If you have too little clearance, what's going to happen is you're going to have excessive wear in your punch and die and they're not going to last as long. So that's basically the reason you want to have the right clearance. So what we're going to do here, we'll talk about it a little bit, how you actually calculate that. So we have a page in one of our catalogs here with a couple of diagrams that show you how to determine and how to calculate that clearance. So we'll look at this little diagram here first. We have it broken down with different materials. So soft, softest material first, aluminum. So there are some calculations here what you can do. For the best clearance, you wanna multiply 10% by your material thickness. So let's say you're punching quarter inch thick aluminum multiply that quarter inch by 10 thousandths, and you're gonna get 25 thousandths clearance between your punch and die. Go down to stainless steel, which is the hardest steel on this chart. You're gonna take that quarter inch material, multiply by 18%, and that's obviously gonna be more than quarter inch clearance. Um, so that would be the great clearance between the punch and die for stainless steel application. So the softer the material, the less kind of clearance you're gonna going to need the harder the material the more clearance you're going to need between the punch and die what we also have here is a chart showing for gauge line stock so if you're you're punching like real thin gauge material it's going to show you the thickness of material and the type of clearance you should use between that and then this is going to be the most important probably chart for everybody what we did was we came up with a chart showing um, the proper clearance for punching mild steel so this is gonna be great. It's gonna give you a great range for punching quarter inch up to half. You'll use a 30 second clearance, half to three quarter, 16 clearance, and so on. So what this does is it helps you when ordering your punch and die. If you're ordering, let's say, a half inch punch, you're gonna order half inch punch, and you're gonna punch a quarter inch material. You'll take that half inch, add a 30 second clearance, and your die will be a 17 30 seconds die then. So this helps kind of simplify it so you don't have to do all that extra math and percentage calculations. If you really follow this chart for mild seal, you're gonna get a good clearance, you're gonna get your tools lasting really long, and you're gonna get nice looking parts. So this is something you're gonna to wanna to save, you're gonna to wanna to keep. We have these here we can hand out to you guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna post something here in the next couple of days so you can save that post and explain and showing these different calculations and these different charts just to make it easy for you guys moving forward um, when you're determining basically your punch and die clearance. Another thing we want to touch about, touch about when ordering your punches and dies from us is you want to make sure that your punches and dies are not the same size. Some manufacturers, some OEMs of iron workers say that hey if you're ordering a half inch punch order the half inch die and the clearance is already built in. That is not the case with us. So for example, what we did here is we have a three quarter inch punch and then we have that three quarter inch die. They do not fit in there and don't have correct clearance in between. So that's when you're ordering your punches and dies, you wanna make sure you get clearance. If you're ordering that three quarter inch punch, let's say you're punching a quarter inch material again, it's gonna be 25, 30 seconds die. Gonna give you a 30 second clearance in between the punch and die and get you a nice hole. But when ordering stuff from us, whether it's on the phone, email, if you're online, ordering everything, make sure that your punch and die are not the same size. 
when you're online ordering, we do have the charts online on every product and the product images kind of help you guide you through that clearance. So let's look at the machines here, what we have set up. So the first one we have set up is the Piranha P50 and we have our 28XX and, um, attachment set up here. So what we have is a star punch that we had made that you've guys seen in a few different videos. And this punch is made to punch roughly 93 thousandths thick aluminum. So doing the calculations, what we need for clearance is gonna be six thousandths clearance total. And what you're actually looking at in there is three thousandths clearance per side. So when you're actually looking at the punch in there, that's three thousandths clearance between that punch and die, six thousandths total. That's what's gonna need to be put between the punch and die to make sure that we get a nice clean hole on this material. So really, really tight in there. You gotta make sure when you're setting up your, uh, your machine, setting up your tooling, make sure that uh, all the tooling's set in there real tight, real nice, and make sure you have the clearance set up all the way around the punch and die uh, real nice and real even so you get the nice clean hole. So what we're gonna do to show you, give you an example, we have the piece of material heel here with the uh, holes in it, but for an example, we'll punch those holes for you to show you that we're, we're not kidding. With this 6,000 clearance, you're gonna get a nice hole in there. So right here, this is the hole we just punched. Real nice clean hole. You take a look at the back side of that material. That six thousandths clearance worked perfect. No burr, nothing, clean. Didn't distort the material at all. It's real nice. So that's the way when you're punching holes, having the correct clearance, that's what you wanna see. So next, we're gonna head over to the Geeka 55. What we have set up on here is just a round punch and die, and that is an actual 30 second clearance total. So it shows you that there's definitely a little bit more clearance between the punch and die. 30 second clearance is gonna be good for punching A36 mild steel from a quarter inch thick up to half inch thick. So that little bit more clearance is gonna help us. We're gonna do the same thing here. We'll punch a hole to show you that we're not kidding here and that it works real, real good here. So um, this is a hole we punched prior. It's a quarter inch thick mild steel. And we'll do the same thing here. there there you go nice clean hole materials not deformed the back side of the materials are all nice and clean so that's perfect clearance that's a 30 second clearance between the punch and die for this quarter inch material next we're gonna hop over to the Edwards 55 ton what we have set up on this machine um, is the punch and die and it has a 16th clearance between the punch and the die. So this is going to be good for punching mild steel anywhere from half inch up to three quarter inch thick material. And what we actually wanted to show you on this machine is show you what does too much clearance look like, right? So are you going to get a burr at the bottom of the material? Is your material going to get stuck to the punch? What's going to actually happen if you have too much clearance? So first, we're gonna show you here, this is a piece of half inch thick material. We punched a hole prior in here. Nice clean hole, no burr at the bottom. So that 16th clearance for this half inch material worked really nice. To show the excessive clearance, what we wanted to do is take this material, same material that we used on the Piranha over there. This is 093 thick aluminum, and we're gonna actually punch it with this 16th clearance. So like we said before, the machine over there was set up with six, uh, six thousandths clearance. This is set up with basically 62 thousandths clearance. So you're talking 55-ish clearance, thousandths clearance too much. And we'll see what actually happens with this material when you have too much, too much clearance.
So the first thing you saw, that uh, punch got stuck to that material pretty good. And the top half of the material doesn't look bad. I mean, you can see on the top that it's kind of forming in there. And what's happening is that punch is just pushing that material into the die and it's actually not shearing it great at first. Just flip this material over and you're gonna see, look at that burr at the bottom. So with that excessive clearance, What's happening is it's pushing that material into the die and it's not shearing it till that material's just pushed all the way in there. So that's not a good hole. If you're gonna set up your machines, you wanna make sure that you don't have a second operation, right? So some guys may punch some holes, have this burr at the bottom, then they're gonna have to take it over to a grinder, belt sand or something to clean the material off. When you do that, that's just more machine time, more production time that's added cost to your job. So that's why it's so important to have your tools and everything set up right the first time to save you time down the road. So we hope this helps. Um, I mean, that's just a brief overview of the correct clearance, showing you a couple examples. So um, like I said, we hope it helps. This is what we're here for. We wanna make sure that when you come to us and when you order your tools that it's done right on the first time and that you're happy with your experience and then when you set up your machine, you're getting exactly what you need and what you want to get the job done for you and your customers. So, like I said, we hope this helps. If you have any other ideas, any other thoughts, anything else you want to hear about on these Friday mornings, just let us know. We're uh, free to go over anything, anything you want help with. That's what we're here for. Um, we have the machines here. We can set them up and show you different examples. So, we hope you guys have a great day and look forward to talking to you next week.